Mic'd Up Sports is TSB Television's talk show series. Available on all major podcast platforms, we offer sports figures, past and present, a place to convey stories and adventures on a deeper level than our traditional game coverage. Whether you're a superstar athlete or someone who works behind the scenes, we'd be honored to share your story. If you'd like to be a guest, contact us at The Mike Peden on all major social platforms. We're ready to get game three of the Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase underway. The players have been introduced, and the tip off gets us going. We have Team Reese in the light color jerseys, green warm ups, and Team Clark in the dark color jerseys, blue warm ups, named for Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. Angel, a 2023 NCAA champion, and Caitlin Clark, the all time record holder for most career points in NCAA history. Women's history, men's history, you name it. We'll see if one of these players has a chance to make some history in the coming years. We have eighth, ninth, and 10th graders in this field, including Shea Kyles out of Harding High School. Harding was a powerhouse in the early 90s. There's Samaya Denman out of Como Park. She was one of the many role players for the Cougars as she tried to connect to somebody down low, it didn't work out. Running time, so we'll keep going, much like the other two games, and that's designed to keep the players from wearing out. Some are scheduled to play more than one game in this exhibition, this showcase of rising stars. That's Amari Johnson, missed the runner. Deborah Ayeni getting a couple of chances, fouled near the rim. She'll go to the line for two. Ayeni. Average 5.1 points, 5.7 rebounds per game as a sophomore for Anoka. Figures to get more playing time next year with Lydia Lockinen, one of the front court players graduating. Of course, you still have Maddie Frecking. She was a double double. So Anoka's front lines should still be a potent force in the Northwest Suburban. Ayeni, the tallest athlete in this field at six foot two. Knocks down the back end to get us started. So Team Reese, the green team, is up 1-0 over Team Clark. This is Kyles. Kyles with the handoff to Harmony Mayberry. Harmony, one of the role players out of Park Center. They had a lot of youngsters over the course of the season. Haley Sicard in the corner. Hits it off to Denman, her three, short. And the rebound picked up by Raven Delaney out of Armstrong High School, FBC North, is her AAU program. That's Anaya Shafa, another one of the Park Center young guns. Shot was blocked. Rebound, or I should say the loose ball went to Kyles. Kyles, one of the top players for a school that hasn't had much history, but Gigi Sylvester, Says, I can do that too. Hey, wait a minute. Did someone put Vaseline on that ball? The grip is a little slippery. And speaking of slippery, Ayeni cutting off the driving lane for Denman. Shafa through the hole, has to go backwards and in. Shafa with our first acrobatic candidate for play of the game. That's not easy to do, going across the lane and laying it in, but Shafa found a way to make it work. Here's Kyles along the left wing. Contested, but Denman is there for cleanup duty. Denman is on the board. And the score is now 3-2 with both teams making their first field goal. Team Clark, the dark color jerseys, they're the home team. Team Grease, the light color jerseys are the visiting team. Whoa, some frenetic action. Sylvester can't hit the 15 footer. Rebound Mayberry, she hit a couple of threes. Good for a few of those. 
Last season for Park Center, a team that is on the rise after some lean years. They had some great history in the mid-2010s all the way through the Adalia McKenzie years. Kyle missing the runner. Sicard thinking about it. Working along the left side, pinched off. Threw it away, Ayeni with the steal. Now Shafa's wearing red, which might be a source of confusion with everyone else wearing the light color jerseys. Sylvester's three is short. Mejana Shaw with the rebound. Shaw with the lob to Denman. Those two teammates from Como Park, a school that had a lot of success in recent years as well with Andrea Adams and the 2022 class highlighted by Ronnie Porter. They haven't been able to rebuild their ranks as effectively since then, but they hope to change that in the subsequent years. Here's Shaw, the handoff to Sicard. Running time again, Kyles for three. Short and they will let it go out of bounds for a dead ball rebound. With just over 13 minutes left. We'll take a timeout. Everyone's still getting a sense of things, a sense of their surroundings in game three of the 2024 Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, Visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. 12.55 left in the first half in game three of the 2024 Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase. Mike Peden with you. It's Team Clark and Team Reese right now. Team Reese with a 3-2 lead over Team Clark. Just a couple of field goals in the early going, but some initial struggles here, and that's not uncommon for all-star events, exhibition events like this Rising Stars Challenge, because even though there's a lot of familiarity between high school and AAU, sometimes for these players, this may be the first time they are mixing it up with their fellow competitors out here in this form, in this iteration. Denman, pinched off by Ayeni, will have an inbound. Ayeni, the tallest player in this field at six foot two, and not afraid to use her frame. In fact, she's the tallest player by a long shot as I'm looking at the roster. The next closest player as I look up and down is Haley Sicard at five foot eight. So Ieni is gonna have a towering presence. Here she comes along the baseline, too strong. Got her own miss, fouled, she'll shoot two. Ieni again, 5.1 points, 5.7 rebounds per game out of Anoka plays on the FBC North AAU program. That, of course, led by Tyler Coley. Ayani split her last time up. Let's see how she handles this one. Front end does not go for Ayani. Ayani is a multi-sport athlete, as I understand it, but not in your typical sense. She plays football and basketball as Ayani splits once more, so she is Two for four in the early going, and Team Reese has a 4-2 lead over Team Clark, but still a long way to go. Here's Kyles. Kyles double, will hand it off to Mayberry. Mayberry, Shafa, Brianna Foster, Lyric Singleton, those are some of the new faces. Deadman trying to perform cleanup duty, cannot. And the ball bounces out of play. Here at McAllister College in St. Paul, the new home for the triple threat event. Mayberry off the inbound, the three is pure. Harmony Mayberry again, a three point threat. That makes it a 5-4 game, Clark in front of Reese. But Mayberry, I think we'll see a lot more of her. Here's Shafa with the answer, you bet. So Shafa has a couple of field goals in the early going. 7-5, Shafa with five, Mayberry. Again, hit her first three, looking to add another, cannot. Shafa with the rebound. Gets through one defender, tries to lead it into Johnson. Pass 
Not quite on target, and Mayberry will collect the steal. Again, it can be a little confusing out there with Johnson and Shafa not wearing white compared to Team Clark. I think everyone will figure out who's who in a bit, but as you can see, not a lot of substitutions available, so that's why we have the running time. Shaw out of the high post, used up the dribble. Swing it around, Denman. Remember, it's that gray line, but Mayberry will take a three from the college line. The high school players don't necessarily keep track of that, and it's not because they're inattentive or lazy, but oftentimes in sports where you make quick time decisions, like Amari Johnson, there's another example. They will look to the first line they see, and in this case, it's the blue line, which is the college line. There is a gray line, but it's not as visible on the floor. That's the high school line. That would be the line you would normally use. But again, instincts, peripheral vision sometimes plays a part in that. With this game and our next one, as you get to the older players, you have young athletes who have grown into their bodies, developed that strength compared to the first couple of games where you saw some players leaning in. Although you don't need to lean in much there. That's Kaylani Johnson with the bucket. It's 7-7, seven, seven. Kaylani Johnson. She will be playing at Minnehaha Academy next year. We saw a couple of future Red Hawks in our earlier games with the Twins, Georgia and Shea Watkins. Second chance for Sylvester. Offline, rebound Shaw, 8.43 left in the first half. Shaw with a dance around Ieni, but too strong. Sylvester with the board. Gigi doesn't have the numbers, but Shafa spots a three in transition, short. And the rebound goes to Denman. Again, everyone lining up behind that college line. It's not as much of a stretch at this level. It won't be a stretch in our fourth game, but it is interesting to note. And for some of these players, they're already used to playing on college floors. Sicard, another three, short. Rebound Sylvester, 7-7 seven, seven the score. Even between Reese and Clark in the Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase Game 3. Ball poked away, and Shaw takes it away. But then her pass, Kyles wasn't there. Wanted to lead Kyles up the floor, but Kyles wasn't in sync. Shafa brings it up now. Hand off to Sylvester, thinks about it. Now Sylvester works the left side. Count it. GG Sylvester with the bucket. Part of the Creighton Durham Hall staff where Crystal Flint used to coach. Minnesota Bobcats is her AAU team, and we'll talk a little more about her when we return with the three-point play forthcoming at the Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase. Mic'd Up Sports is TSB Television's talk show series. Available on all major podcast platforms, we offer sports figures, past and present, a place to convey stories and adventures on a deeper level than our traditional game coverage. Whether you're a superstar athlete or someone who works behind the scenes, we'd be honored to share your story. If you'd like to be a guest, contact us at The Mike Peden on all major social platforms. Gigi Sylvester, a regular in this triple threat event. We've covered her name before. We've seen her in action. Creighton Durham Hall going through some lean years of their own. They made state as recently as 2018. New coaching regime this year as Sylvester completes a three-point play. Crystal Flint stepped down. Now works, of course, with the Sane Foundation. Tara Seifert came in and got Creighton Durham Hall some key wins. Injuries afflicted them, but Sylvester, that three-point play makes it 8-7. Uh, that's not right. It should be 10-7, but it is an exhibition game. And the clock is frozen at 7.35. Amari Johnson, no freeze on her game. She takes it in for two. So Amari Johnson is on the board, but the score, unless I'm not reading it right, well, it's going to be 10-10 after the Kyles three. So Shea Kyles knocks down her first triple. It's 10-10. Clark tying Reese with that last bucket, 7.35. And we're still at 7.35. The clock has been frozen for at least a couple of minutes here. We're going to get some bonus basketball, I think. Johnson, her three is short. Sylvester 
Got the rebound inside to Ianni. Hacked again. As we said before, Deborah at 6'2", the tallest player in this field by several inches. So she'll have a chance to break the tie. She has split her first two free throws. Ianni, the multi-sport athlete, misses the front end again. Her position as a football basketball crossover, not entirely unprecedented. Heidi Barber of White Bear Lake, a three-sport athlete, backup quarterback on the football team, and also played basketball and softball. Ianni splits at the line for a third time. Well, she's getting to the line. I think she'd like to fare a little better than 50%, but she does give Reese an 11-10 lead over Clark. And we are still at 7.35. Ianni with the snatch. Getting into the cookie jar and taking those sweet treats away from Denman. Carrying call. That will hand the ball back to Team Clark. This is the longest seven minutes and 35 seconds I have ever seen. We have some new faces working the clock and sometimes, depending on the system in use, it can get a little tricky on how to operate it. But Najana Shaw, no tricks with her game. Had a couple of 20-point games this past season for Como Park and is perhaps establishing herself to be one of the primary figures for the Cougars, a program that had a lot of history, but the last couple of years have been a little rough. They just don't have the personnel, and that is the beauty and the beast of high school sport, graduation being the great equalizer. Shaw blanking at the line. Sylvester, that's for three. Remember, it's the gray line, not the blue line. Shaw with the takeaway against Delaney, the Armstrong Falcon. Denman used up the dribble, nowhere to go. There was nobody there. Sylvester with a free run to the rim, and it goes out. Kyles with the rebound, and a fortuitous break for Team Clark, as we still have seven minutes and 35 seconds to go in the first half. Someone falling asleep at the controls? Well, Ianni's certainly not falling asleep down low collecting the miss from Mayberry, and it's gonna be hard to get position on her at 6-2. The high-low, Ieni fouled again. Another trip to the free throw line awaits. Deborah Ieni, three for six. Of course, this is an exhibition game, so the points don't matter, just like whose line is it anyway. But Ieni asserting herself with that frame, that presence, and I wouldn't be surprised if she picked up a few tips, tutorials from the likes of Maddie Frecking and Lydia Lockinen. Anoka, a competitive team in the Northwest Suburban. Maple Grove won the conference this year, but Anoka has um, hidden gems, unsung heroes, if you will. Ieni makes both this time, so that will bump up her total to five, and we'll take another timeout with the score 13 to 10, Reese over Clark. Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase 2024 Edition. When the high school season is over, TSB Television goes on the highlight trail. Our highlight reels provide you with a valuable resource for recruiters and a keepsake of your favorite athlete. To learn more about our highlight reel services, contact us at tsbtelevision at gmail.com. Team Reese with a 13-10 lead over Team Clark. Deborah Ianni with five points all at the free throw line. If you've watched my regular season broadcasts on TSB television, I say regular season because postseason is a little different story, but either way, free throw is not the sexiest way to score. They do matter though, they can add up if you can knock them down. And again, I think Ianni would like to hit a few more, but she does have five points. And we'll see how that comes into play later as the clock stops again at 6.31. Mayberry's three near the corner is long. Rebound up for grabs and picked up by Amari Johnson. 6.31. I've never seen this happen. This time, Reese completes the transition play. And that was Delaney with the bucket. So it's 15-10 as the clock is fixed in place again. I don't think I've ever seen this happen before. Usually at a game, it will stop for a few seconds or it might run for a few seconds. 
But you never know what will happen. You just got to ride the wave, sometimes bow to the absurd, as the saying goes. And we'll do our best to keep track. There we go. The clock is running again. If this kept happening, this kept up, I think the players would be gassed. But Delaney has plenty of gas left in the tank. Her short range shot was too strong though. Here is Shaw. The lob to Johnson. Three, bullseye. Kaylani Johnson makes it 15-13. Kaylani, the sixth grader. Metro Stars Starks and going to Minnehaha Academy next year. A lot of talent making their way. Ayeni, the sophomore. Missed the take to the rim. Here comes Clark. Johnson too strong. Had the bunny, had the bucket, but could not put it in. But when you think about all the talent Minnehaha had this year and some of the youth that will be making their way as Delaney is fouled, folks like Johnson could be early impact players. Right now, though, the focus is on Raven Delaney out of Armstrong. Armstrong, another one of those schools that has fielded some athletes over the years, but had a tough time breaking through. In the case of Armstrong, they're in the same section as YZ and Hopkins, so you can ascertain, gauge, estimate how that will go for anyone else in that section. It's hard to break through with the powerhouses that are Hopkins and YZ. But Delaney gets the front end. We do see some substitutions taking place with under five minutes to go in the first. Delaney will split at the line. Johnson collects the rebound, so Delaney, I've got her at three points. 16-13, Reese over Clark. Reese again in the light jerseys, Clark in the dark. Shaw from the wing, attacks, kicks out to Mayberry. Mayberry will reset. Denman out at the left elbow, trying to get past Ayeni, but there's another example of that height advantage, and Ayeni was able to use it to poke the ball away. But ultimately, it returns to Clark after Delaney had some trouble handling it. Mayberry banks in the three, her second triple. That's what you call making lemonade out of lemons. As we're even at 16, four minutes to go. Whoa, Johnson left alone and missed the bunny. Amari Johnson had a wide open lane. The defense abandoned her, lost track, and she couldn't put it in. Those are gonna be some of the things I think these athletes will work on in future years of varsity play. Denman's three is short, Mayberry saves it. Johnson, got it! So Johnson, unofficially with eight points, and that should make it, well, that 17-16, that can't be right. Ayeni through the lane and in. I think there's a discrepancy with the score, but Ayeni makes it 18-17. It is an exhibition game, the points don't matter, but I, I feel like these players are getting shorted a few. There's no spread that we have to worry about in this game, right? <laughs> Three minutes to go in this first half. There's Denman. Gets the leaner on Shapa and Denman has four points unofficially. 19-18, Clark over Reese. Again, I think the score is a couple of points short, but that's what we'll go with. Shafa adds three more to the Reese column, her second triple, 21-19. Reese over Clark, Mayberry, the skip, Denman, Long, the save, and the putback for Johnson. Gaylani Johnson, with nine quick ones. We're tied at Blackjacks with 2.28 to go. Mic'd Up Sports is TSB Television's talk show series. Available on all major podcast platforms, we offer sports figures, past and present, a place to convey stories and adventures on a deeper level than our traditional game coverage. Whether you're a superstar athlete or someone who works behind the scenes, we'd be honored to share your story. If you'd like to be a guest, contact us at The Mike Peden on all major social platforms.
Kehlani Johnson with the last bucket for Team Clark. We're tied at 21. Again, that's what we're going with. Even if you're keeping track at home and wondering if the points aren't adding up the way you see it, this is an exhibition game. The score is ancillary, auxiliary. This is all about showcasing the next crop of talent and perhaps some hidden gems. The folks who maybe don't get the headlines like Addie Mack and Madden Greenway and Tori Orline. Shafa trying to make some headlines on the run to the rim, could not. Mayberry to Sicard, back to Johnson. Kehlani, the sixth grader. If you take this and the earlier two games, Kyle's three, short, but the ball ends up back in her grasp after the rebound attempt, good save by Sicard. Turnaround shot for Denman, not there. Ayeni with another rebound. I wonder if Deborah feels a pinch of excitement about this. Johnson, driving kick. Now Ayeni's got it at the key. Here she comes from the right side, fouled again. She'll shoot two. Ayeni, five of eight from the free throw line and seven points in this game. So Ayeni, We'll try to get a couple more on the board here. Front end falls, Deborah Ayeni. Again, you have to wonder if she's enjoying this game, this environment, because she gets to be the tallest person on the floor. Doesn't have to worry about those other lengthy post players in the Northwest Suburban and elsewhere. But again, Ayeni, gauging plenty of experience, logging it, I should say, as a sophomore. And I think it will bode well for her. She's up to nine points after the pair of freebies. 23-21, 40 seconds to go. Sicard to Denman. She fires and rattles in the bucket. Samaya Denman with six. 30 seconds. Time for one more play, perhaps. Here's Amari Johnson. Johnson with the lob to Shafa. She's fouled and she'll shoot two. And with the running time rule in effect, this will be the last bit of game action regardless of what happens here. So Shafa will get a chance to break the tie. She's got eight points. And she will break the tie, but she'll get to shoot one more before we run out the clock in this one. Shafa. One of the Park Center Young Guns banks in the second, and that will take us to halftime. So Shafa with 10 points, Ayeni with nine in the first frame of game three here at the 2024 Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase. An assortment of eighth, ninth, and 10th graders, and it's an assortment that is favoring the likes of Ayeni and Shafa with 10, 25-23. We'll see what happens in the second half. You're watching the 2024 Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase at McAllister College in St. Paul. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James, toss shot, it goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh, I don't know, that put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. We've highlighted the young guns gracing our presence here at the Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase on the court, and that extends to the public address booth. We've got some young faces flexing their voice. Speaking of flex, here are the first half numbers. Kehlani Johnson with nine points to lead Team Clark. Samaya Denman with six. Harmony Mayberry with six for Team Reese. We highlighted this at the end of the first half, but Deborah Ayeni with nine points, Anaya Shafa with 10. Those two paving the way. Sylvester and Delaney both have three each as we are ready to start the second half. I'm Mike Peden again. 
Team Reese in the light colored jerseys, Team Clark in the dark colored jerseys. This is Mayberry, who has a couple of threes to her credit. Running time, 18 minute halves. Mayberry back to Shaw for three, short. Sakar tips the rebound to Denman, giving Team Clark another chance. Kyles used up the dribble. She hit a triple in the first half. Denman moves inside on Ayeni, gets the bounce. Samaya Denman with eight points. Again, Ayeni's got a few inches over everybody. Denman listed at 5'7", Ayeni at 6'2". That's not an easy assignment to get around. Johnson, the runner at short. Sicard with the board, Sicard out of Eastridge. Shaw through the hole, the floater. Oh my, we've seen a lot of those bunnies miss the mark. Mayberry's three short. Denman fouled on the putback attempt. So Denman will go to the line. Denman, like Mayberry, one of those role players for her high school team. Perhaps Denman will get to add to her figures next year for Como Park. Denman, a sophomore, 25 all is the score. It's a reminder though of just how much things can fluctuate where you've got teams that are prime for state titles year after year. Denman splits, Hopkins comes to mind. Ayeni nearly threw it away, but Shafa does recover. 26-25, Team Clark in front over Team Reese. Shafa around the screen. Denman with the rejection, but it went right back to Shafa. She finds Ayeni. Ayeni didn't have the space she wanted, so she kicks back out to Johnson for a reset. Johnson lets it fly, bullseye. Johnson with her first triple. And it's 28-26. Amari Johnson, one of the latecomers to this game. So I can't tell you where she goes to school, but I can tell you Haley Sicard says right back at you. That's her first field goal. And that puts Team Clark back in front, 29-28. Johnson, wearing number three to Shafa, that bright orange number three. Ayeni, that's a warm up. Don't confuse the MCA with her high school affiliation. She's an Anoka Tornado, tries to blow her way into the rim. Too strong on the lob. Denman, stripped again by Sylvester. Delaney can't handle it. And I think someone put Vaseline on the ball because nobody can hang on to it. Shaw for three, it's there. Shaw wasn't much of a factor in the first half, hoping to change that here, and that three could go a long way. Largest leap of the game for Team Clark. 32-28, Shafa got bumped by Mayberry. Those two, again, highly familiar with each other. Ayeni with a step on Denman. She's got the height, she's got the quickness, and Ayeni's got the bucket, her first of the second half. 32-30, Reese back within two. Shea Kyles, yes! Give a player a lane, and they will take it all day. And call it a good day, whether it's in LA, St. Paul, or anywhere in between. Sylvester tried to lob it to Delaney. Now Delaney has to recover, too strong. Kyles with the rebound. 14.08 left in the second half, again, running time. Kyles, I think, just lost the handle. A free pickup for Ayeni. And she's gonna play a little point guard, bringing the ball up. I know the stretch four is a thing. Ayeni's gonna go coast to coast for the layup. Ayeni with a coast to coast run, reminiscent of Tamiya Yugis and that coast to coast run she made three years ago at this event. Shaw with the answer, short. Now the difference between the two, Yugis had to run the length of the floor. Ayeni just had to go from the free throw line, but still, that's an impressive feat to make a solo run from one end of the floor to the other. 13-31 left, 34-32, Clark over Reese, Ayeni up to 13. Mic'd Up Sports is TSB Television's talk show series. Available on all major podcast platforms, we offer sports figures, past and present, 
a place to convey stories and adventures on a deeper level than our traditional game coverage. Whether you're a superstar athlete or someone who works behind the scenes, we'd be honored to share your story. If you'd like to be a guest, contact us at The Mike Peden on all major social platforms. Deborah Ieni making a case for player of the game with her ability to score, her ability to control the low post, the paint, the glass. Ieni making the most of this showcase event, but that's what this is about. Crystal Flint, the founder of this showcase, build it as you saw it here first, referencing the Rising Stars games. And even though Deborah Ieni is no stranger to varsity competition, she might get to add her name to that list of you saw it here first. Much like the Watkins twins earlier today, Shafa step back three off the rim. Rebound to Johnson. Kehlani had nine points in the first half. And one of the many youngsters going to Minnehaha next year, Shaw. Can't finish, Ieni with another board. Johnson. Ieni is not gonna try to repeat that coast to coast run. Not when she's got Johnson, who drills a three. Amari Johnson with eight. 35-34, Reese retakes the lead over Clark. In game three, we'll have one more game to follow, as is the custom for this triple threat event. It's not just one game that other All-Star games usually do, or two, depending on the field. It's everyone, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. You don't have to be a senior to participate. And I think that's what adds a unique flavor to this event, and it gives some of the younger players a chance to highlight what's to come. Well, right now, what's to come is Ieni going to the free throw line after she was fouled on the high-low attempt. Deborah Ieni with 13 points unofficially. It's one thing to do it at this venue, but if you can extrapolate gauge, ascertain how that might translate to varsity play. I think the pieces are there for Ieni to make a sizable leap next year for the Anoka Tornadoes. She's been learning the ropes and making the most of her time. Remember, she did average over five points and five rebounds per game, so it's not like she's the backup or a stat padding player. Shafa padding her stats and padding her way to the rim. Ieni blinked at the line. Shafa says, I've got you. And with that, Shafa has a chance for three. 37-34. Reese over Clark with a three-point play on the way. And Shafa completes it. 38-34. Reese over Clark. Of course, the points don't matter. This is an exhibition game. This is meant to highlight all the talent that's around. Ooh, Ieni threw up a wall on Johnson. Shafa lost the handle. Johnson is there and gets the friendly bounce off the high lob. Amari Johnson has quickly built up her total to 10 with 10.25 left in the second half. You never know who will step up. And again, some of these players are already veterans of this triple threat event. Speaking of cleanup duty, a couple of chances there, but Denman can't finish after the Kyles miss. Another rebound for Ieni. Deborah might as well set up a tent, a campground, because I don't think anyone's going to be battling her. Ieni with the turnaround on Denman. That has been a favorable matchup for the Anoka 6-2 sophomore. She's up to 15 points following that conversion. 42-34. Reese with their largest lead of the game over Clark. Denman through Ieni, up and in. I think Denman's had enough. Denman is taking this personally, I think. 9.36 to go, 42-36. Denman up to 11 points. I don't think she's taking it that personally, but that's always a momentum turner. And we'll see how it turns the tide in this Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. 
That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. 9.36 left in the second half. Samaya Demon up to 11 points with that last bucket. After Ayeni beat her a couple of times down low, Denman said right back at you on the last play. And again, that is the perk, the beauty, the benefit of an event like this. A lot of these players already have AAU teams, as you can tell, with several wearing their club jerseys. There's no rule on which jersey you have to wear. We get a mix of high school and AAU, and I always find that fun. Shaw got the rebound after the Shafa miss. Shafa with a give and go, got it. Shaw up to five. The Como Park rising star. Fulfilling, embodying the name of this game, the Rising Stars Showcase, Rising Stars Game Challenge. Shaw ready to rise to the occasion, got the rebound there. Lobs it to Denman. This time Denman's got the matchup against Shafa, but Shafa stayed with her to cut her off. Sylvester would love to get another bucket here. She's had a tough go of it though offensively. And another runner goes awry with eight and a half minutes left. 42-38 the score. Reese over Clark in a back and forth contest here at McAllister College. Delaney trying to throw it up off the inbound, but anytime you get underneath like that, it's hard to get the angle you need. Shaw through the hole. Another layup is hers. Shaw ran the give and go last time. Takes a stroll through the middle this time, and she's got seven. Didn't score in the first half. She makes it a two-point game. Sylvester still unable to find that touch, that English. Shea Kyles on the other end. She'll shoot two. With seven minutes and 45 seconds in the running time session. Shea Kyles out of Harding High School in St. Paul. Harding hasn't been a factor in girls basketball in a long time. They had a winless year many years ago. Just haven't been able to get the athletes, the personnel, the support they need. Wearing the Minnesota Heat uniform in AAU. And that can make it difficult. There have been some athletes who have put up solid, respectable numbers at Harding, but without the infrastructure as Kyle's misses both free throws, it's hard to break through. St. Paul Central, now Como Park, they've dominated the conference and in their section, Harding has been in the cellar of sorts. Perhaps someone like Kyle's can get them out of there because back in the early 90s, there was a lot of pride in that East St. Paul powerhouse. Kyle's missing the runner. Sylvester would love to change her tune and set a new course. Instead, Shaw trips her up and they will call that a travel. So Shaw with some pesky, astute transition defense. Shaw steps into the three. Ayeni might have gotten a piece of it. Johnson cannot save it. Stepped out of bounds, I think, before she touched the ball. Ayeni utilizing her vertical once more. Nejana Shaw at five foot six. That's about eight inches. You give up on Ayeni. Johnson off the screen, set by Ayeni. Her three is short. Mayberry with the rebound. Mayberry to Sakar. We haven't heard from Haley in a while. Eastridge. Bounce pass from Sakar to Johnson. A well executed run by Johnson. I was going to say Eastridge, one of those teams that has always been on the cusp, but has yet to break through into state. They came oh so close again. They've been to many section finals. Ayeni 
converts the high low from Johnson. Miami had the position, and with that frame, you give her a good pass, that lead pass, it's money. She's going to take it in for two. I think we're going to see a lot more of that next year to Noka. Straight away three short from Sicard. Shaw with the rebound, and she cleans up the mess. Shaw with nine, 44, 44. A photo finish brewing here with just over five minutes left in the second half. We'll take another timeout again. These are timeouts imposed by the scores table because of the lack of substitutions, but don't go anywhere. A neck and neck battle is awaiting us. When the high school season is over, TSB Television goes on the highlight trail. Our highlight reels provide you with a valuable resource for recruiters and a keepsake of your favorite athlete. To learn more about our highlight reel services, contact us at tsbtelevision at gmail.com. 5.08 left in the second half. Nejana Shaw trying to replicate the success of her predecessors, Ronnie Porter, who really took a step forward this year at Wisconsin. KK Asbury, two of the greats that got Cobalt Park. Their first state tournament win a couple years ago. They hope to get back there. Here's Shapa, hoping to get her way inside. Cannot. That was a crowded lane. Ayeni from the high post. She's got 17, tries the fadeaway. It's too strong. Shaw adding another rebound. It's 44-44. Crunch time here at McAllister College. Shaw, Mayberry, Sicard. Sicard trying to get space. Mayberry looking for the three. Step back, too strong. Shaw was out, or I should say Ayeni was out there. Patrolling the perimeter. And when you've got that frame to deal with, you have to take an extra step or two. Johnson, three goes off the back iron. Dead ball rebound to Team Clark. We are still even at 44 as we try to settle the score and determine a winner in this one. Kyles used up the dribble, had it mishandled. Delaney times it. One on one with Johnson. Delaney blocked by Johnson. That was a sixth grader, Kehlani Johnson, although she's not exactly tiny, 5'5", five, five, but I think still has a growth spurt. Armstrong, or I should say Delaney. Delaney goes to Armstrong, listed at 5'7". Last year they had a wondrous post player in Savannah McGowan. Ayani with the dime, and Sylvester drains another bucket. We're so used to seeing Ayeni patrol the paint, get those boards. I guess she can distribute two. Shaw with her team trailing by two, finds Johnson, the kick out to Kyle. She fakes. Wanted to work the baseline. Has to hand it off to Mayberry along the right wing. No shot clock. Delaney times it again, but could not corral it cleanly. Now, Team Clark has numbers. Kyle's. Lost the handle and traveled. Took a bunny hop. You noticed the dribble was slightly disrupted en route and that was enough to throw off her concentration. Here we go, 240 and counting. Two point game, 46-44. Reese over Clark. Shafa gets bumped as she tried to sprint her way down the court. So we'll have another inbound here. And with running time, there's still some chances here to make a play, but those whistles can work against you when you're the trailing team. Ayeni, baseline, short. Rebound Johnson. And Clark, pick up another bucket. Sakar does just that, getting through the lane. That's her second field goal, but it's a big one to tie it up. Delaney is fouled, and she will shoot two, yes. Now these are big free throws here because 
If she makes any of them, it will eat away at time. You know, it takes about 30 seconds or so to complete your free throws. So this is a critical juncture here in a running time game. Raven Delaney out of Armstrong missing the first. Savannah McGowan, the player I mentioned earlier, playing D1 at Illinois State, one of the top post players in her class. She was good for a double-double just about every night, but much like Como Park in recent years or some of the other schools, Armstrong having a tough time breaking through amidst the perennials. Ianni got the rebound after Delaney blinked at the line. Shaw missed. Delaney with a second chance, too strong. We're still tied at 46. Sicard with the rebound, 48 seconds. Jump ball is called. Team Clark with the arrow, 41.9. Crucial possession here. Shaw for three, bullseye. A huge triple makes it. 49-46 with 29.3 seconds on the clock. Nejana Shaw, all 12 of her points have come in the second frame. And Team Clark, who trailed by eight not too long ago, hoping to complete the comeback. We'll find out if they can successfully do so in a moment. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Tough shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, Visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Nejana Shaw, one of the leading scorers for Como Park in a season where they got to the section final, but ultimately fell to Roosevelt. A section that arguably wasn't all that strong, but Como Park hoping to strengthen themselves for next year. Quick three from Johnson is offline. Ianni with the rebound. Delaney with the put back to make it a one point game. 16 seconds. Johnson, here comes the pressure. She's fouled. And the clock's still going. Now they stop it with 11.3. I think they'll be a little more lax with the running time rules in the last minute. You don't want to have someone foul their way to the end of the game. That's not the spirit. So 11.3, from what I heard, Team Clark now in the bonus if they get another foul, and Sicard will go to the line with 6.1 on the clock. Haley Sicard with five points, part of an Eastridge team that has done well since Ashley Ellis Milan came in. They've made the section final all but one year, but still unable to punch through into state. Sicard gets the front end to fall. They've fielded a lot of talent over the years, and they'll have some talent coming back for next year's team. But right now, Sicard trying to make the most of her moment on the showcase stage. She hits both free throws. 6.1, timeout is called. So here's the situation. Reese is gonna need a three. Nothing else will do, you can't go for a two now. And Crystal Flint, the founder, is gonna go to the scores table and let's hear what she has to say.
Crystal Flint announcing that Team Reese can advance the ball. This is an exhibition event, so we can bend the rules a little. Normally, you cannot do that. I believe in AAU, you can, but in high school, you cannot advance the ball. You may recall, of course, several years ago, in women's college basketball, they changed the rules that allow teams to advance the ball on an inbound following a timeout, as long as they don't move forward with it. So here we go, 6.1 seconds. In terms of three-point shooters, Amari Johnson's got a couple. Anaya Shafa's got a couple. We'll find out who takes the shot. Shafa lets it go, and she's fouled. As time expires, Mayberry heading to the other end of the floor in surprise and shock, and from this vantage point, I don't blame her. I didn't see a ton of contact from this angle, this perspective, but the game's gonna come down to this. Shafa, who has 14 points, or 13 I should say, needs to make all three, or that's it. Now she has 14, but she still needs two more. And that's going to do it. So Shafa, well, they're saying this next one will go to overtime, but I have no idea what's happening anymore. Shafa will miss it, so it's a moot point. Clark completes the comeback, 51-49 over Team Reese in another entertaining, engaging, exciting duel here at the Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase. A balanced effort for Team Clark, Shaw with 12, Denman with 11, Johnson with 11, and Haley Sicard hit a couple of big free throws. That made the difference. She finishes with seven. For Team Reese, Deborah Ayeni with 17 points, Anaya Shafa with 14, and Amari Johnson with a nice second half finishes with 10. We'll try to get a word or two with some players of the game when we come back in the 2024 Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase. Team Clark beats Team Reese 51-49 in a photo finish. You're watching the Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase on TSB Television. Mic'd Up Sports is TSB Television's talk show series. Available on all major podcast platforms, we offer sports figures, past and present, a place to convey stories and adventures on a deeper level than our traditional game coverage. Whether you're a superstar athlete or someone who works behind the scenes, we'd be honored to share your story. If you'd like to be a guest, contact us at The Mike Peden on all major social platforms. We're joined by Deborah Ayeni. Of course, I have to run for our next game. She'll be playing in the next one, but since she scored 17 points, even though her team didn't get the win, she was lighting it up down low. Deborah, thanks for stopping by. I know you're a sophomore, you have some varsity experience, but how fun is it to get a showcase event like this to highlight just what you can do out there? Uh, this is a really super cool opportunity for girls to just come out here and like show their talent. Um, I was very uh, excited when Coach came up to me at my um, uh, uh, my uh, tournament at um, what was Bloomington Jefferson. She came up to me and she invited me to the showcase, and I was really excited for this opportunity to play. And what AAU team do you play for again? I play for FBC North 2026 right now. Yeah. FBC, okay, I know that program well. I think Tyler Coley runs yeah. it, yeah. and he's well known with Crystal Flint, the orchestrator of this event. What do you enjoy most about getting the chance to play? You mentioned the opportunity. A lot of times these exhibition events are for the seniors, they're send off. Here you get a chance to highlight what you can do. Um, I just love the fact that uh, I can come out here and I don't have to stick to uh, like a single position. You know, this is here. I can come out here, play outside the perimeter. I can go on the post. I can do anything I want here and I can show, you know, coaches and anybody else what I got, you know? What was your favorite moment uh, from today's game? This first game, I should say, because you might get a few more, but after spending a long time at the free throw line, seemingly forever, you were able to finally 
show off those post-up moves of yours. Yeah. Um, I'd say my favorite uh, part of the game was at the end there when she got fouled for her uh, three. I mean, she didn't make her free throws, but it was a, it was a great uh, gut-wrenching moment, you know. It's, it's a beautiful for players who love uh, tie games, you know. Yeah. It certainly made for a lot of fun up here, too. You're a sophomore, and I know next year Anoka will be changing a few pieces up because I think Frecking, Maddie Frecking, or Lydia Lockin, one Evan of the. And Lydia. Ev, okay, Lydia and Evan are both graduating, so we were talking about how that might open things up for you to do more things down low. How do you think a game like this and your club season will carry over to next year where you may get some more responsibilities? Um, honestly, it just gives me. Uh, a chance to put in the moves I put in the gym, the work, like those unseen hours, it, it gives me a chance to show them on the court and it gives me more confidence to use those in games when I'm playing, you know, the Andovers, the Conrappers, the Blaines, to take us to, you know, the state championship. Yeah. Well, it, with Maddie coming back, you patrolling the paint, I think there's a chance that Anoka could make a splash. We'll see what happens, though. That's a long way away. If you don't mind telling us, what got you started in basketball? When did you start picking up that ball and hooping it up? Um, honestly, my brothers were a big inspiration for me playing basketball. Um, they started playing basketball at a really young age, and I just picked it up with them. I started playing around kindergarten, and, you know, I just loved it, and I kept going. So kindergarten, and now look at you. You're getting double-doubles out there or close to it. Who are the players you look up to, your favorite player, the people that inspire you to keep pursuing this sport? Um, a lot of... Oh, man, the women's college area has been crazy. You know, you got Alyssa Peely, you got Angel Reese, you got a lot of big players. Oh, Audie Crooks, she's a really big inspiration for me just because she came out of Minnesota too. And, you know, I just love seeing them come from here and then show what they got on the big screen. And it's, it's really cool to see. Audie Crooks, I think she went to I Iowa, but I get what you're saying. She would come up here for tournaments. Yeah, she she, yeah, yeah, she was in Iowa, but I'm pretty sure she played in Minnesota for high school. Yep. Yeah, well, she did. She came up here once with yeah. Bishop Garrigan, yeah. and I would see her in AAU tournaments. Right. I knew what you meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't want Iowa State fans or Iowa people <laughs> coming after you. I want to look out for you. But Audi Crooks, I'd say, is a good choice. Well, Peely, you're going to get to see her uh, yeah. pretty soon in a Lynx jersey. And Kate, Caitlin, I was about to say Caitlin Clark, but that was the team name. But Angel Reese, she's going to hook up with Cardoso in yeah. Chicago, and they've said they've already – uh, get along quite well. So those are all three good choices. And Crooks, I know that drew a lot of inspiration for others, especially those, uh, I've said this, it doesn't matter what you look like, how tall, short, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you work hard enough and you can go out there and ball, there's a place for you. Yeah. I'd say there's certainly a place for you. Thanks. And these next two years, I know you're still probably sorting out college choices, things like that. But what does your journey look like as you enter your junior senior year? Um, honestly, I'm just looking for to get an opportunity from from any college to play there. You know, uh, as long as I get a scholarship, I'm down to play. Really. <laughs> now I'll ask you this. I've been asking this of all my guests here. What's a fun fact about yourself that people wouldn't know if they met you for the first time? Um, I do play football as well. Yeah. Do you play on the foot varsity team, JV? Or? I, I play a little bit of both. Yeah. Okay, what position? Uh, O-line and D-line. O-line and D-line. Well, I'm going to a women's football game as public address announcer. That's why I'm leaving. I might, well, you're a little young. They have to admit only 18 or up. Yeah. But uh, I might pass your name along to uh, those teams because if, whenever you're done with basketball, uh, there's a couple of teams, the Vixen yeah. and the Minx, who yeah. I think wouldn't mind having you along that line. I got visited from the Vixens in eighth grade. Yeah, so that was super cool. Yeah. I've met a couple of folks. Another friend of mine was once their water girl at a game years ago, and she could play football yeah. too. So, all right. So we've got a woman who can handle the gridiron and the low post just as fluidly. So anything else you'd like to add about this experience? I'm just grateful to be here, and I'm glad you guys are watching. Thank you. All right. You want to say hi to anybody before you go? Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, David and Michael. Well, hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. And hi to any potential future teammates on the Vixen or Minx or college, wherever. Deborah, thanks for stopping by. Thank Have you. fun in the next game, and uh, good luck as you continue your, your spring and summer season. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah Ayeni. You'll see her in Game 4, which we'll have for you shortly here at the Triple Threat Girls Basketball Showcase.